Am Ditech, and I very recently made a video explaining how I go about painting motherboards for my motherboard mods. The link to that video will be in the description, but I wanted to elaborate on that process a little bit just to ease some concerns that some of you might have. Now, again, if you want to see everything that I do to paint motherboards, you can go ahead and check the video in the description, but briefly, all I do is cover the entire motherboard in conformal coating, this like acrylic conformal coating that just kind of makes a protective layer over the motherboard. Of course, you have to cover all of the slots and everything first with some like kind of masking. I use just painter's tape, green frog tape specifically. And then you wait like a day or so and then you spray paint with enamel paint and that's very important because it's um, heat resistant and does not have any conductive properties. So you just spray paint over everything with the masking still on the board and then once that dries you just take off the masking and kind of touch up some of the areas that you couldn't quite get to with the spray paint because of the masking and everything and I just do that with a paintbrush with the uh, spray paint. I just spray the spray paint out into a cup or something something and use the paintbrush to touch up those areas. Anyway, I did that to one of my brand new motherboards and it's actually the motherboard that I'm using inside of this computer behind me. And a couple people were kind of like hesitant about doing something like this to a motherboard, especially a brand new one, because you know, you would think that it could damage the board or something like that, increase the heat to the point where it might break. And that is true if you don't do it correctly, but the way I do it is perfectly acceptable. And I can prove that to you here in just one second, but I would like to elaborate on what kind of paints you should be using. I use Rust-Oleum, I, I basically use Rust-Oleum enamel for just everything always, but it's really important to use something that is non-conductive and heat resistant on your motherboard because it can get kind of hot. Um, good motherboard temperatures are, if you're under 60 degrees, you're good to go, anything between 60 and 80 you might want to increase the fans in your uh, system, just like add some extra fans or do something like that, increase the cooling somehow. And then anything over 80 degrees is kind of in the danger zone. Now my motherboard runs at around 30 degrees or so when it's not under load and some parts of it get up to 40 and some parts get even up to like 55 when it is under maximum load, but that's still an acceptable temperature and my motherboard is super duper painted. Now you don't necessarily need to use Rust-Oleum enamel. I know Krylon has some enamel paint and there's uh, Velspar has some enamel paint. There's other things like that, but you definitely do want to use some kind of enamel and I just personally know that Rust-Oleum works. And if you can find some enamel paint that's specifically for like engines, like engine enamel is a good thing to use on your motherboards because it allows heat to travel through it very efficiently or something that's meant to go in appliances like a... Um, like a grill or something like that that gets really hot, then that's even better. Do not use Plasti Dip or anything like that because Plasti Dip is insulating and that will just keep the heat in on the motherboard. So when it gets hot, it just stays hot instead of allowing that heat to dissipate out into the air and get picked up by the fans. Of course, that means this is an all or nothing kind of thing. You'll definitely void your warranty if you go about painting your PCB on your motherboard or any of its components, but that's just a fact of life for PC modders. Now besides just painting the PCB of the motherboard, which is all I did to this one, you can also paint your heat sinks or any heat pipes or anything like that on your motherboard because a lot of them will be some like weird colors that are just ugly and a lot of people would want to change that. But you definitely want to avoid painting the bottom of those because they attach to a thermal pad and the thermal pad sits on top of VRMs and the heat from those VRMs dissipate through the thermal pad into the heat sink and then out into the air from the heat sink. And you don't want to block that from happening. So don't paint the bottom of the heat sink, but you can paint the rest of the heat sink. But it's really easy to know what not to paint. Just don't paint any of the connection points and don't paint anything that the heat sinks are covering. And you won't be able to see those spots anyway because the heat sinks will be over them. So it doesn't matter if they're painted. It won't affect the aesthetics of the build at all. So here I'm running a bunch of benchmarking programs, and this is just to get the temperatures up to a stable level on the GPU and CPU where they're only going up and down around one degree Celsius. And I just want to do this so that it can get up to the highest temperature that it will ever possibly have to deal with. And as you can see, it's still in the range of acceptable temperatures. And I just ran um, Cinebench a couple times as well, just to tax a different part of the motherboard. This will be around the CPU instead of around the GPU. 
and this is also in acceptable ranges, and I did this quite a few times. And here you can see that there are four motherboard temperature readings that are displayed in the cam software, and like I said, I've been benchmarking for about 20 minutes at this point, and the temperatures have been stable. I don't know for sure, but it makes sense that the four temperature readings would be for the CPU, or the motherboard around the CPU, and under each of the heat sinks, so the two at the top and then one at the bottom underneath the graphics card. Now I have this little laser temperature reader thing that I'm checking just the rest of the motherboard parts where there is no sensor that tells me what the temperatures are. I'm just checking the rest of the motherboard without sensors to see if it's going above 60 degrees, which nowhere on the motherboard it goes over 60 degrees, which is, again, what we're looking for. We want to keep under 60 degrees everywhere, and we succeed. So I hope this video gave people a little bit more confidence when it comes to modding their motherboards. You can totally paint any part of the motherboard you could ever want to paint, just the PCB, you can paint the heat sinks, you can paint the I.O. ports, you can paint anything you want and it won't affect the temperatures of the motherboard more than e just a few degrees, if that. All you have to do is keep in mind the obvious stuff, like don't paint the connection points or anything under the heat sinks and use the correct type of paint and things like that. Again, the link to the video where I explain all of this stuff in greater detail is in the description. And now you can just buy a motherboard based on what type of utilitarian benefits that it gives you instead of aesthetic benefits because you can just change the aesthetics yourself. Just make any motherboard ever fit any kind of theme that you want. Anyway, I've got some really cool mod projects coming up, so if you're into computer modding, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.